Hey guys, it's Miss Ash here, and today we are going to make a solar oven. And a solar oven is an at-home way of making s'mores in a fun and neat, unusual way. So one of the things I love most about summer is camping and making s'mores over a campfire. And I do have a fire pit in my yard, so I could do that. Um, but I actually really don't like using my outdoor fire when it's just me at home. Um, I get bored and I just don't have as much fun with the outdoor fire. And when you make s'mores in an oven at home, it's just not quite the same. So I thought we would try a solar oven today to see how good they turn out. So we need a pizza box or a flat style box with a flap and you can see it's a used pizza box. That's totally okay. We need some tape, tin foil, saran wrap, scissors, and then a black material. Um, you could use black construction paper or even paint. Um, I just happen to have um, black shelf liner in my kitchen that I'm using. <laughs> And then we have s'mores and our chocolate in the back. I don't actually have Hershey's chocolate at my house because I prefer to make my s'mores with Reese cups usually. Um, but we're going to try these. These are a special candy that is made in the UP. So I thought it was a fun precursor for UP week next week. So we'll try these today and see how good they are. Um, I actually don't have crackers at um, my house for... Um, s'mores because I'm allergic to um, gluten so I don't have regular crackers at my house so we're going to skip those in my recipe but you could use those um, if you have them at home. Okay so to start with we need to um, cut a flap in our box in the top so we want to cut a square area out of the center of the lid of our box and it doesn't really matter what size the more um, s'mores you want to cook at one time the bigger flap you want. So because it's just me, I'm gonna make a pretty small flap. And as you do this, you wanna be really careful you don't puncture yourself. Okay, so you can see I left the back connect part connected to this with the box. So we have our flap, and then we have our regular box lid. And then because this box was totally flattened, I'm going to tape up the edges just so um, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so step two is we want to cover our flap with tin foil. You can glue this tin foil on or tape it. Um, I'm going to tape it just because that's what I have at home right now. And you wanna try and keep it as smooth as possible. And you want to make sure you get your whole flap covered. So if you run out of a big sheet, um, you can use multiple sheets to do, um, so the whole thing is covered, which is what I'm doing. Um, I didn't have one big enough sheet. I'm almost out of tin foil, so I'll have to add it to my grocery list this week.
Okay, so now we have our tin foil covered flap. And we are going to apply saran wrap to the inside cover of our pizza frame. Again, you can use tape if you have it um, or glue. I just prefer tape um, for this piece because saran wrap sometimes melts when you glue it, especially if you're using a hot glue. And I also really wanted some more, so tape is a little bit faster when you're hungry. And you wanna try and pull it taut, but you wanna be careful not to rip your saran wrap. And, um, you wanna make sure your tin foil piece is below your saran wrap. So you're gonna play the saran wrap over top, but make sure they're not glued together um, because you actually want your tin foil section to pop through like this. So it'll be tin foil, saran wrap, bottom of the box. So now our saran wrap is applied evenly around the area we cut off. So we have our saran wrap layer right here, and then we have our tin foil layer. So when we put the pizza box up, it'll kind of look like this. So the next thing we need to do is put our black um, material on the bottom. And this is just some um, thicker black shelf liner that I have that I use underneath um, dishes when they're wet in the kitchen. Okay. So here is my finished product. If you use construction paper or paint, um, you may want to tape it down depending on what surface you use. So the next thing we'll do is we'll make sure that our box can close correctly. Okay. My shelf paper is kind of getting in the way of this closing. Okay, so this is what our final product will look like. Now you guys may need to install something for this to lean on. We're gonna try it without first to see if we can get it to work. If not, we'll just use a pencil to hold this upright on an angle. Because the goal is, is that the sun will reflect off the tin foil and cook our s'mores through the top of the saran wrap. So let's get started. So we're gonna test a couple of different things. We have Reese cups, ooh, they're already melting. Um, I just pulled these out of my fridge because I like cold Reese cups in the summer. And I got our marshmallows. And we're going to make four, two, three, four. So we have four. And we are going to put one chocolate Reese cup on top of this one. This is where it would be helpful to have your graham cracker because your graham cracker would be on the bottom to protect this. Actually, we might make it like this. 
um, you'll put your graham cracker on the bottom, then your chocolate, then your marshmallows. So it melted onto um, the graham cracker and held it all together. Um, but since I don't have any, we're just going to make do. I always think chocolate looks very gross when it's melted, but boy, does it taste good. And I sure am making a big mess. Okay, so there's one, two Reese cup styles. And then we're gonna try our UP chocolate. Our UP chocolate's in a big bar, so we're just gonna crack it in half and put it right on top of our marshmallows to see how that works. Okay, so then we're just gonna shut it. Ooh. Maybe we'll put this one on the wrapper and see what happens. See if the reflectiveness from the wrapper helps our case. Okay, so we're gonna shut our box back up. So everything is nice and sealed and we are going to um, set our box up in the sun. So I set this up and I did need something to hold it. So I just used a screwdriver to prep my lid up. Um, normally we're pretty lucky in my classroom because somebody from Mr. Sam's room, like Mr. Miles or Mr. Christian or Mr. Sam himself come down and help us with some of the handy stuff when we can't figure it out ourselves. So today I had to do it by myself and it turns out my trusty screwdriver worked perfect. So we're gonna set it up outside in the sun. Ignore all the weeds in my yard. Um, on this week's to-do list. Are you guys using a to-do list to keep you on track this summer? I certainly need to. So we're gonna just let this sit outside for a couple minutes and see what's happening. You can already see how much our chocolate is melting. So we're gonna leave it out here for a couple minutes and check in and see what's happening. It did just have a bunch of clouds blow in. If you guys can see at my house, it's quite cloudy, even though it's warm out. Um, so we'll check it in a couple minutes. It's about a half hour and we're checking out our marshmallows. And you can see a bit of a summer storm roll through. So everything's looking a little less than perfect. But the marshmallows did start to pop, pop up. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to stop our experiment for today, but um, if you guys want to try this at home, give your marshmallows about 30 to 90 minutes, depending on how um, direct the sunlight is for your cooking. And let me know how they turn out. I would love to see them.